When you retire, you may get a chance to go to football heaven. This is football heaven. Hey guys, welcome to the Mission Podcast. I'm your host, Jameer Howerton, and I am super pumped for today's show. I am honored to be joined by, from the class of 2008, the original TIP. That's right, Andre Tippett is joining us right here on the Mission. Welcome, sir. How are you today? I'm doing good, Jameer. Nice to be with you, man. Happy New Year to you, and... Uh... It, uh, I can still say Happy New Year, right? Yeah, we can still, still say Happy New Year. Year. Yeah. And it's the first time I'm seeing you this year. You know, if I would have said it to you in August, you would have looked at me like, come on, man. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so pumped for today's show just to get your take on uh, the AFC and NFC championship games. Um, break down some of the impact of this year's finalist class because there are a few of those senior finalists that you played in the same era, and I would love to to get your take on their contributions and but most of all just want to talk to you before we jump in and have some fun I want to go behind the numbers Andre I want to go back to 1982 second round 41st overall what did that year what did that day what did that time mean to you when you were drafted into the pro foot excuse me when you were drafted into the nfl oh uh, one i was very i was ecstatic uh i was glad that it was finally over i you know you we we, we all think one thing and then something else happens and you know I, when you're that young you go by what you hear from other folks. And, you know, I, I thought I was going to go higher. I, 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 I still, you know, to this day, uh, think I should have been higher. But you know what? Uh, someone took the time to invest in me. Uh, the Patriots drafted me in the second round. And, and, you know, as I look back now, you know, I could see what was happening. And the Patriots were putting together, you know, that team that eventually in 85 would kind of blossom into what, it was supposed to supposed to become but you know at that time i got cameras in my apartment i got people looking at me i got people calling you know and and and, and i'm excited and 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 it finally happened and i was just like wow you know okay all right now i'm ready to go into my second you know going to the second level now this was before twitter this was before instagram this was before social media so did you get the phone call like how did all that happen well, I got to I got to tell you this. It was funny. I, I when I said now I had a ton of uh, cameras in my apartment. They right. all called me, Andre. Are you comfortable with us being there? And I'm like, yeah, 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 sure, come on. And funny thing happened. My teammate Ron Hallstrom got drafted in the first round by the Green Bay Packers. You should have seen the exodus in my apartment. And I'm looking, I'm like, you know, where's everybody going, you know? And all of a sudden, you know, we got to go over to Ron's uh, apartment. He just got drafted by the Green Bay Packers. So now I'm sitting there and it's the second day. And I'm kind of, you know, I still got a couple of guys hanging around waiting to get my reaction. And uh, I finally, I get the call. I get the call from Ryan Myers. And uh, he just says, uh, hey, congratulations. I want to let you know that we as the New England Patriots have just drafted you. And I knew about Ron. I knew he coached uh, Eric Dickerson and and and, uh, and my old teammate, uh, Craig James. So I figured, all right, okay, I'm going into something new now. And uh, But it was cool. I got the call. I spoke to him. I spoke to uh, Dick Steinberg, who at the time was one of the top personnel people in the National Football League. He had put together some of those great Ram teams and uh it, it was cool i i had the conversation and i was i was relieved i was relieved and and here's what i did uh the next day i finally called my attorney i said jim can i go get my car now he says yeah he says you drafted now so you can go spend the money so that's all i wanted to do i wanted to get me a car man and i went out and i had been test driving a 280zx silver and black now i got the silver and black because i assumed the oakland raiders was going to draft me right 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 and so i had the color picked out and everything that's how confident that i was that i was going to be that oakland raiders uh, late draft pick and uh but you know everything worked out 
Andre, that car is near and dear to my heart because I finally, as I got older, I was able to get my not 280Z, but a 300Z. But <laughs> my thing is this. Now, I'm a, you know, compared to you, yeah, I'm a little overweight and I'm, and I'm working off my new year weight, but Trey, you tall, you a big man, you a linebacker. How did you fit in a 280Z? Two plus two. I had the back seat. Now, I never carried anybody in the back seat. So the guy says to me, he says, because I tried to sit in one. He says, oh, you can't fit in there. He says, I hear what you should do. You should get the two plus two. Didn't know about the two plus two. So, right. Um, I said, all right, cool. So whenever I did have anybody, whenever I did have three passengers with me, I said, hey, look, sit over on the passenger side because whoever was sitting wasn't as tall as me. And uh, we always made room. I right. loved that car. I kept that car for about maybe four or five years and, uh, and, and, and I moved on. But it was my dream car. It was a five speed. And I'm telling you, for a month, the dealer would let me come over once or twice a week. I would test drive it. He took me a couple of streets in Iowa City that were, you know, uphill, uh -huh. inclined, and I'm never drove a five speed before. So I'm like, he's got me in there. He says, all right, don't worry about people blowing their horn at you. Just, you know, ease into it. And, and I did that a couple of times. And then I, I did a solo a couple of times and I got over that fear <laughs> and uh, learned how to drive a five speed, taught myself and uh, it, it was cool. As we continue to go behind the numbers with Andre Tippett, looking behind me, 2008, that was a very magical year for you after completing 11 seasons in the same, I have to say that, in the same uniform, the same organization, donning that red New England Patriots uniform, 151 games, 100 sacks, five Pro Bowls, and may I add, at the time when you went to those Pro Bowls, those five consecutive years, you played every single down, and you guys were hitting hard back then in the Pro Bowl. But before we get into that, talk about 2008 when you were elected here to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It was probably, next to my children being born, one of the greatest days of my life. Um, mm. It was uh, the Hall of Fame. You know, no one comes into the league thinking about the Hall of Fame. Uh, no one thinks of doing it. All you're thinking about is trying to survive and make the team, no matter where you, what round you were drafted in. You come to training camp, you know it was a grind. You knew it was a necessary evil to go through training camp. And, uh, you know, all I cared about was, you know, making that team. But after everything is all said and done, the body of work is out there, is laid out, and the comparisons are started. And um, it, 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 was, it was cool to see it happen to – be enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame uh, and today still means the world to me. It means that uh, I'm thought of as one of the greatest players. I'm part of a great group of men who played the game the right way. I played with a great group of tough guys that uh, played the game uh, the way the game should have been played. And the legacy and, and the body of work is there. And uh, and it's cool to be associated with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, it, it means that you're one of the best. 151 games played. Can you pick one or two of those games that just stands out to you <laughs> where, I mean, that's a lot, <laughs> but that was just that was very special to you that sometimes when you're driving into the office, you're like, whoa. Man, I remember that game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny you say that. Um, you know, obviously, you know, my rookie year it was a strike year. So a lot of things were happening. Coaches had a certain way of thinking. They wanted to go with the veterans. So us young guys wasn't getting that fair look. We get we couldn't really get a chance to compete because the coaches had already known that, you know, there's going to be – uh, a strike and we're going to have to go with the veteran guys we're going to go with guys that already know the game and you know it was a lot that was happening and and and, and I, I as I said again I look back on all that I'm like you know and I I, I I was upset that I didn't get a chance to fight for a starting job my rookie year mm. but uh I look at the next year uh we're we're playing against the the Jets and this is a game that 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 out of all the games I played um, it was the coolest game because one, I'm from New Jersey. 
Secondly, I, you know, had I not been drafted by the, you know, the, 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 the Raiders or the Cowboys, I would have thought maybe Jets or the Giants want to get a homeboy and bring him back, you know, and put him on a team. Right. And, uh, but the fact we were playing against the Jets, my home team, I knew everybody in Jersey and New York were going to be watching that game. So for some reason, every time I played those guys, um, I always had great games. And this particular home game in uh, Foxborough Stadium, uh, I think Richard Todd was the quarterback. Okay. I remember Richard Todd. Yeah. And one in one series, I had uh, I believe a tackle on a screen on a on a sweep play for a loss. I had second play. The second play was pass coverage. I'm covering the back out of the backfield, knocked the ball out of his hand as he's entering the end zone. And then the third snap, I sat. Todd for like a 10 yard sack, 10 yard loss. And it was sort of like that. Holy cow. This kid here is legit. You know, and I had the veterans, the veterans were quoted uh, the next day in the newspaper that, you know, uh, that Andre tip is a special cat, you know, and it was nice to get that recognition from the veterans. And, you know, it was like, I was being accepted to be on the team. And uh, but it was one of those games, man. I balled out, and it was it was like the second year, and uh, you know it was like I was I wanted to be respected. I I wanted to be legit. I wanted to be authentic. I wanted mm-hmm. guys to know that you know I'm here to play. I'm not a one hit wonder. Right. Um, I want guys. I want the coaches to look and say, "Hey, we screwed up. <laughs> we should have had this kid starting from day one from last year." You know, but you know, you just it was it was different. It was different. I, I think that strike year screwed up a lot of things. It was just we didn't get a chance to really compete like we wanted to. I, I kind of want to add to that too. You playing against the Jets, you like, hey guys, you screwed up. You could have took this hometown talent right here. I was sending a message to him. So <laughs> for the next however many years is going to be, I'm going to be a thorn in your side. <laughs> Five Pro Bowls consecutive. Talk about those games because you see the Pro Bowls and the evolution of now with the Pro Bowl games. But when you guys played in a Pro Bowl, man, I hear Bernie Kozar talk all the time about how it was hard hitting. It was not an all-star game by any stretch of the mean. Well, it, it, one, the other piece to that too, Jameer, is it, it, it was you, you were voted in by your peers. You mm. know? So if I'm playing against you, twice a year and when it comes down to the ballot i don't think there's going to be a lot of questions as you're going down the list of names and you know who you want to vote for you know you earn that respect by kicking your opponent's butt and whoever lined up against me i'm gonna i'm gonna make your day hell i'm gonna i'm gonna test you just as you're gonna test me so i'm worried about getting hooked by the tight end i'm getting worried about getting blown off the line by the offensive tackle i'm, I'm worried about being cut down by fullback and and you know so I'm, I'm i'm competing i'm trying to figure out how to you know how to do this thing how to how to how to be a thorn in their side and so when it's all said and done you know all of a sudden you hear about the voting that's coming up and i'm like you know what's that they say oh they got to vote for the for the for the pro bowl and i'm like okay and then all of a sudden you know you start getting you get in once and you know you, you I, I love this this is the greatest one the first time in, they said, oh, you should have gotten it last year. I'm like, well, shit, that would have been six Pro Bowls. I'm like, well, what the hell were you thinking about? <laughs> um, I, you know, I, play of the year. Oh, you, you you should have got it the year before. And I'm like, well, what did I do different from last year than I do th- did this year? So, you know, uh, but you respect that. You respect it. And I think people say that, hey, man, I screwed up. You know, we got the kid in this year, but, man, we missed that. How do we miss that the year before that? But. All of it was done by your peers. I mean, it still is to this day, but I mean, but it was real. It was, it was like, you know, we, we, we didn't put no powder puffs in, you know, and it wasn't none of that, you know, once you got in, you didn't want to play. It was like, mm-hmm. it was your badge of honor to get voted into the Pro Bowl. And then once we were there in the Pro Bowl, we we're in Hawaii and we're playing and the games coming up on that Saturday. And everybody's kind of, you know, the first quarter, we're taking it easy. The second quarter, we're taking it a little, little bit more serious. Halftime, okay. Anybody hurt? No, nope. okay. Third quarter. And then all of a sudden, the fourth quarter comes. Now, we ain't supposed to be stunting and, and, and blitzing anything like that. But all of a sudden, we got a 7-7 tie. Right. We got a 7-14 game. <laughs> 
And all of a sudden, everybody's thinking, man, I brought people with me, man. I got a big bill at the hotel, man. I said, you know, I'm going to need that winner's purse to pay for all the guests that I brought with me, man. So, hey, man, we need to step it up. We need to go get that quarterback, get that ball out, man. And then all of a sudden, guys, man, you you got guys slipping and and, and stunting and, and and guys are, oops, I, I mean, I know I didn't mean to blitz. And you're blitzing and, <laughs> and you're just trying to, you're trying to win now. You, right. You're listen, I mean, it, it was the difference of, I believe 10,000 for the losers, 15,000 for the winners, or or it was 15 and 20, but nothing like it is now, but still right. it was it was money. It was like, okay, I, 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 I hey, we need to step up. We got tabs at the hotel. And if my mind serves me correctly, you guys were staying at the Ilani. We at the back then? Yeah, in Honolulu, yes, we were. The Honolulu, I remember. <laughs> yes, yes. 100 sacks. Wow. That's a lot. Thinking it back to that number, is there one quarterback that you wasn't able to get to? And 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 out of those 100 sacks, which one was the sweetest sack? Well, you know, when you play against you know your peers, guys that you respect, you know, you're talking about you know, Dan Marino, uh, Jim Kelly, uh, Boomer. Size and you're talking about uh, the guys from the Jets. Um, uh, even if you play out of the league, you know, Young, uh, Montana. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I got Montana. I got Young, I think, once. But you know, there were a couple of guys that that uh, that got away. And uh, you know, it, it was just you know, uh, it, it was competitors. I mean, you knew that you know a guy like Dan Marino, great quarterback, great arm, uh, John Elway. Hell of a hell of a hell of a quarterback. Great speed, quicker than people gave him credit for. Uh, very elusive. Um, you could chase him all day. Uh, Cunningham, you know this guy here, man. He he make you look foolish in a heartbeat. And uh, so you know it was it was mm. you you were trying to test those guys' courage. Mm. You, know, you want the you wanted to 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 lay some wood. And back then we could do it. We laid wood on those guys. Jim Kelly, I love him to death, man. I'd hit him so hard, and I swear to God, he's not coming back the next play. And he'd get up and look at me and start grinning. Uh, Dan Marino, I, I would hit, I try to hit, I would try to hit Marino so hard, man, that that I would just knock everything out of. And he'd just get up and he'd look at me. He'd start yelling at his head his offensive lineman. He'd get on uh, Dwight Steve. Hey, 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 Dwight, this guy got out. Let's go, you know. And you could hear them <laughs> yelling at each other. Hey, you guys better step it up and protect Marino, man. And it, it, it was it was fun, but uh, mm. you, you you knew with those guys, no matter how hard you hit them or, or, or you know or the threat of, of getting after them, they were still going to come back. They were some of the toughest. Those guys were some of the toughest guys that uh, that I had the privilege of playing against. And I, my my hats off to them. And I love I love all those guys to this day. I know your fan base knows this, and for our viewers here that may not know this, um, Mr. Tippett here is a six-degree black belt, and please don't get me to explain. I got promoted uh, a you, couple of years ago. You did? <laughs> oh, congratulations. Wow. Wow. Because like, I know the last time we talked, you know, yeah. when we were on the road to excellence, yeah. we were talking yeah. about that. Wow. Yeah. Seventh degree. And and, and I, I, I do not even want to attempt to try to talk about the, 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 excuse me, pronounce the discipline of what it is, but I'll leave that to you. Well, what, what, what is the seventh degree uh, black belt yeah. in? It's a, a seventh degree black belt um, in a system, Okinawan karate system called Wei Chi Ru. And uh, it's one of the four Okinawan systems. You have uh, Wei Chi Ru, Goju, Ishin Ru, and Shoan Ru. And uh, I happen to be studying that discipline for the last uh, 40 some years. And uh, uh, I hold the rank of Nana Don or seventh Don with the master title of Kiyoshi. So there's three levels of master ranking, Renchi, Kiyoshi, and Hanchi. Uh, Renchi is sixth down. Kiyoshi is seventh and eighth. Hanchi is ninth and 10th. And uh, so, it, 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 you know, it's something that uh, I've loved ever since I was a, a young boy. And uh, I've been able to pl uh, train with some very legitimate, authentic, authentic, uh, karate instructors 
And I've had a chance to, as I we, we've talked before, I've traveled yeah. to Okinawa quite a few times to train with the masters. And uh, it, you know what? It keeps me young, keeps my mind sharp. Uh, I started a uh, karate club at a local college uh, a year ago. Uh, okay. It's called Curry College. So we created a Curry College Karate Club. So I teach over there twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We got some college students that, uh, you know, all of a sudden they see me walking in the door and they're looking at me and they're like, you look familiar. I said, yeah, yeah, I get that all the time. But all of a sudden, you know, we're out there on the floor training and they all come back to me. And they're like, we didn't know you played for the Patriots. You know, we, we Googled you, man. We're like, wow. Yeah. But uh, it's fun. I love, I love the art. I love teaching. And mm. teaching keeps you, keeps you, keeps you sharp. Um, I, I love sharing what what I've learned, and mm. uh, if you don't if you don't share it, you lose it. Now I you know I continue to train and, and and do those things, but being able to share and teach is probably one of the greatest joys that uh, that I have. And there's so much that you can share with people, so much that you can pass along, and there's so many things through the training that have given me you know uh, 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 that that pickup. How much did that attribute to you with those hundred sacks and just your overall play on the field? Um, as a, as a, I, I get that asked that question all the time. As a defensive player mm -hmm. and as a pass rusher, yeah. Um, you have to be violent with your hands. You have to be fast with your hands, and you have to understand leverage. They teach that to the D lineman all the time, uh, offensive side, defensive side. But I was able to pick up on that long time ago. So I knew the importance of, all right, I got to get these guys hands off of me. I got to get him out of his comfort zone. He's going to have to jump out to, 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 to meet me. And then I'm going to either do one of two things. I'm going to slap the hands down or I'm going to change direction and I'm going to use his weight and his leverage against him. And uh, it's the same thing in, in the martial arts. The, the caveat was also is um, martial arts is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Right. And I'm out there, hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'm fighting. Tight ends are trying to hook me and knock me off my feet. Fullbacks are trying to cut me down. Linemen are trying to road grade me. And so uh, I, I fight. So it was like a fight to me. So I'm going to defeat you. I'm going to defeat you. And you're going to try to do what you think you're going to do to me. You're going to try to get your hands on me. And all of a sudden, I'm going to be escaping your grasp. And you're going to be trying to figure out uh, uh, what the hell is going on. And, you know, we got meridians that run up and down your forearm. So if you hit person a certain way, you know, it's they don't even realize they flinch. And so I was able to incorporate a lot of those things that, you know, without hurting anybody. But right with their attention and all of a sudden, you know, there you go to pull your hands back too late. I'm gone. And right. I had I was gifted with with quickness and 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 speed and some strength. And uh to add all that, you know, it it uh it it, it made for great opportunities for me. You know, we may have talked about this, but I don't remember. But when working with the Cleveland Browns, um, we had Master Kim, Master Joe Kim, who um, I'm I'm for sure he actually worked for a little bit with you guys in New England. He's still here. Oh, he's still he's here. Still okay. Yeah, yeah, I pass by all the time. We always talk. We, we Okay. We, we, okay. Well, well aware of him. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. And I remember I used... when he uh, first went to Cleveland, I saw that, you know, I saw all these guys that right. were doing karate they're bringing in karate guys dallas cowboys uh randy white he was big with uh one of uh uh, uh ward uh dr ward was their okay. strength and conditioning guy with the cowboys who was a student of dan ensenado dan ensenado is uh one of was one of bruce lee's uh top ranked students so uh they um instituted a lot of hand-to-hand -hand type of stuff with the Cowboys for a long time. I mean, they were doing it back in the wow. early, early 70s. And so I was able to uh, pick up on that. And I, you know, I was like, you know, I was already doing karate. I started karate when I was 10, 11 years old. So yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden I'm reading the karate magazines. And then in the 70s, they, they did an article, I remember, on the Cowboys and, and Bob Ward, how they implemented 
that into the, I said, oh, really? I said, okay, so it's going to help me as I move along in football. And I was able to utilize it and uh, and put it. But uh, yeah, Kim, I see him all the time. I pass yeah. by his office probably twice a day. Okay. Okay. Well, 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 Tip, before we change gears here, I just want to ask you this, you know, you work for the organization and how often do you get a chance to bond with the guys to really explain to them about how the game was played and, 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 and impart some of that wisdom to them? You know, I, I, I used to do a lot. Mm-hmm. Coach Balchek would let me, you know, obviously speak to the rookie class every year. Did that for a long time. Um, I'm downstairs uh, every day and, you know, I, I try not to bother anybody. I just kind of ease in there. I'm like that big uncle that, you know, you see your uncle just hanging around talking to people. And, uh, but I, you know, I, I'll go and introduce myself to, to, to the new guys and the old guys that, you know, we, we set up and we catch up as kids, what's going on. Right. And uh, I just, I, I make myself available if a person ever, ever wants to talk, have a conversation. I say, you know, I, I'm not going to get into the politics of anything, but I'll, if you want to know if I can make suggestions, if you're a linebacker, defensive player, pass rusher, I'd be, I'd love to have that conversation. I make myself available all the time for that. But uh, um, I'm, I'm always, I'm always there to talk to these young men, um, you know, and, you know, some guys embrace it. Some guys fight it. Mm. It's just human nature. Right. Uh, we are uh, sometimes victims of our environment and where we come from. I was very fortunate to have a great mentor mm. uh, in high school, at the high school level. So it carried me from high school to college to the pros. Right. And uh, I love to share. And, 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 and because things were shared to me, things were told to me how you carry yourself as a man, how you carry yourself as a football player, how you compete at a championship level. I've at every level I had success. So to share that, to hold on to that would be selfish, but to share it, you know, you're only going to help these young men try to be uh, the better person of themselves, a better version of themselves. I would be remiss to not mention the fact that in 1999, along with being in the class of 2008, a pro football hall of famer, but in 1999, you donned the red blazer, if you will, into the Patriots hall of fame and everything that you're talking about, learn it, earn it, own it, and share it is what you're doing as a Patriot hall of famer as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, you know, it played with some great guys here, you know, John Hanna, uh, Steve Nelson, uh, Don Blackman, my old teammate, uh, 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 Roland James, uh, Raymond Claiborne, uh, Steve Grogan, uh, Tony Collins. Uh, you know, I could go on and on and on. Some of the great guys and the, and the guys that have earned that title of uh, New England Patriots Hall of Famers were all great guys who left uh, the body of work on the field. Great legacy here. Uh, you know, granted, you know, we got a chance to be the first team to represent the Patriots in the, in the, in the Super Bowl. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the post of the, the pre 2000 teams um, got a chance to kind of really set the tone uh, for greatness. But, uh, but we had some great guys that wore the red, white, and blue here. Well, switching gears a bit, um, as you know, the process is 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 going through where um, we're soon about to announce this year's 2023 class of the Pro Football Hall of Fame and looking at some of the, the finalists. And when you look at the uh, senior category, Chuck Howley, Joe Klecko and Ken Riley and the coach contributor finalist for this year is uh, head coach Don Coriel. Um, but one of those guys that the name jumps out to me, and we spoke earlier about the New York Jets, Joe Klecko being an, being a, named a finalist for this year's class. If you could talk about his contribution to the game of football and you being a, a, a defensive juggernaut yourself and watching that guy and seeing all the various positions he played along that defensive line, um, what are your thoughts on him? Well, Joe Klecko, man, he, you know, watching him, uh, probably one of the toughest guys uh, in that era. Um, Joe was one of those guys that, 
you know, he, 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 he played, I think he played like three or four positions along the line of scrimmage. And he was just, he was always known. He was always uh, visible as, as a tough guy. Um, he was always involved in the middle of everything. Um, you know, he was just, you know, when you, when you see Klecko, you just think of, you know, an Iron Man guy <laughs> that, uh, you know, he found a way to, 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 to always be there, be out on the field. Um, great, 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 great heart. Um, I, you know, we, we, it's football is tough guys, you know, tough, I, I don't care. You know, you can talk about the speed and, and all that other stuff, but football is about toughness because, you know, it isn't natural. It isn't normal. It isn't normal to do the things that we do. And when you see certain guys do the things that they do, you just take your hat off to them because you know that uh, regardless of what's going to happen to you later on in life, you know, if you have to do it all over again, we all would line up with the helmet in our hand, the cleats on our feet, and we'd get it done. But Klecko was a tough football player tough, uh, and a great competitor. And one of those head coaches, Don Coriel, and you were blessed to be around your head coaches. Um, but just knowing the contribution that he's had on his on this game, what was challenging about playing against a Don Coriel coach team? Well, one, <laughs> you knew those guys were going to air it out. And if you didn't have your communication down, and if you wasn't talking to the DBs and, you know, who's going to go here, who's going to do what, who's doing an in and out, who's doing this, uh, they were going to run the scoreboard up on you. Mm. You talk about, you know, Dan Fouts and John Jefferson and, 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 and Charlie Joyner, all those guys, man. Those it, it 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 was amazing, the offense that they had, and you know it it to Don Coriel's uh, commitment, he saw to it that he utilized all these guys, and and not to forget about Chuck Muncy being in the backfield. Mm. He was like my size in the back. He's like a grown man. You know, you see him with those goggles on. You're like, you know, everybody's <laughs> looking. Like, well, who's going to tackle him, man? I'm like, I'm not going in there. But, um, you know, they utilize everybody to the max. And you have to appreciate, you know, the offensive philosophy and 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 how they went about their business as, uh, you know, as, as, as a, a high, 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 high polluting offense. You know, in 1985, you were named the Defensive Player of the Year. And then looking at this year's um, nominees for the NFL superlatives, Nick Bosa, Chris Jones, Micah Parsons. Uh, talk about, you know, these young men and their contributions to the game as they await to see who wins this year's Defensive Player of the Year. Something that you're extremely familiar with getting honored with. Well, again, you know, those guys are the guys that, you know, y'all better watch out for your quarterback because somebody going to get hurt if they don't get a hat on these guys. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like, you know, it, it again, it's, it's, it's the test of courage. Mm. So if I'm an offensive guy, where's my pride? You know, I understand that I'm going against, you know, uh, Parsons. I'm, I'm, I'm going to work all week on my footwork, my hand placement, and I'm going to challenge. I'm going to make this cat make his day hard to go touch my quarterback. Mm. And somehow these guys all have figured it out. Um, the technique is flawless. And I'm going to tell you, they probably scared the hell out of the offensive line. And it's like, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to stop this guy? And so it's, 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 it's a mindset. It's mm. a mindset. It's a mindset on the defender's side. And it's a mindset on the offensive side who's got to block these guys, keep these guys off their people. But uh, I, my hat's off to these young men. I, I you know, I, I watch, I see them, and and and, and I love uh, the fact that these guys know how to go flat out, go get the quarterback, and they got you know, phenom phenomenal uh, pass rush ability, and the speed and the quickness and the strength, and you know. Um, I, I admire all those young men. You have a you have a young man um on the New England Patriots, Matthew Judon. Talk about how special this young man is and how he brings it 
week after week. You know, he 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 set a standard this year. Um, we, you know, it's funny. You know, I'm uh, kind of quiet. You know, sometimes, and right? And I've got a chance to watch him and 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 be around him, and 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 obviously seeing him play every weekend and week out, and it's been fun watching him. I mean, he's chased after, you know, some of the records that I have, and you know, he's come close. And you know, and it's funny, you know, the 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 old school OG veteran in me kind of want to go whisper in, in in the ear and just say, you know, a little bit harder than you think it is, isn't it, out there? <laughs> um, but uh, phenomenal, phenomenal player. Great speed, great strength. I mean, he's similar to the guys that you mentioned that that are that are that are being honored this year as a defensive player of the year. Yeah, um, you know, he could have easily. He was actually in the running early on, and uh, should have been, and still should be talked about. Um, but uh, very capable young man. Uh, play the run play the pass, play coverage, you know, you want to be well-rounded, right? I, you know, I, for me, that was always the, the goal, uh, never be one dimension. Uh, you know, you would never call me, you know, a hybrid or, or this or that. I was strictly an outside linebacker who happened to be able to rush and blitz and chase after the quarterback, but I as well could cover the tight end down the field on a seam or jump the running back on a swing route so right. um the well-roundedness is the things that i admire about you know judah before i let you go we got to talk shop this week afc championship nfc championship um first game san francisco 49ers philadelphia eagles 3 p.m eastern standard time talk about this matchup um we, we talked about defense you're a defensive guy it's going to be a dog fight. It, it, it really is. And I'm going to tell you, it, it, the four teams that are surviving now and and and, and the two, the, the, the quarterbacks, mm -hmm. it's going to be about quarterbacks, how they handle the pressure, how they lead their team. And they're all are going to have to set the tone because it's been defense, and, 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 you know, you got Kansas City who, you yeah. know, they can throw up a ton of points on the board. But it's going to be about the quarterbacks establishing their domain and, and, and then the defense not giving up the big play. I mean, you're going to have to make those teams earn everything. And I mean, it, it's, you know, a lot's going to happen. Right. All four of those teams have looked outstanding and they're strong. I mean, you know, 49ers, Eagles, who do you pick? Bengals, right. who, who do you pick? You know, um, it, 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 it's going to be fun game to watch. Um, but I, I think the quarterbacks, I think quarterbacks. it's going to be the quarterbacks who, and, you know, you look at a guy like Brady, you look mm -hmm. at a guy like uh, Patrick Mahomes, who's been there, you know, they've set the blueprint. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that, you know, as you lead, the team will follow. Right. Yeah. How impressed have you been with Cincinnati? Because, you know, one thing about New England, you guys have coined the term of airing out the white noise, blocking it out. You don't even hear it. And, man, if you look at the first four or five weeks of the season, pundits had the Bengals written off. Bust. Right. I don't know how they got to the Super Bowl last year, whatever. And it's like... You know, down there in the nasty natty, they just yep. kept battling and battling and battling, and here they are. They're in the AFC Championship game. Again, their quarterback, he's been leading, and they got a nasty little defense. It's sneaky. They've been they've been doing sneaky things out there, and all of a sudden, you know, you got those defensive linemen that are just creating havoc out there. Um, again, it's as you said. Don't listen to what people are saying about you because yeah. the only thing that matters are the 53 or the 60 men that are in the locker room right now. I mean, we're the ones that are going to battle and we're not listening to anything. Just think about it. Had we listened early in the year, what people were saying about us, we right. would, we'd have been, you know, we'd have dud it out a long time ago, but they haven't. They, uh, they got a great coaching staff. They got uh, 
that they got guys. You watch those those football yeah. players. They got some good football players on that team. I mean, hey, they're going back. They were there last year. Yeah. So they got a they got a taste of it. And, you know, it's like I tell everybody, you know, when we went to the Super Bowl in 85, we said, all right, we we went, we lost, but we're gonna be back. We're gonna have another opportunity. And it ain't promised to you to get back. Mm. It ain't to get back. And that's gonna be the selling point for these guys moving forward. You know, it's like, hey, we came close. All right, let's kick the door down this year. So yeah. they got something to prove. And then, you know, we you know, we play those games with ourselves. We got a chip on our shoulder. You know, they don't yeah. expect it. so they're gonna ride that. They're gonna they're gonna and whatever you need to do to motivate yourself, that's what you do. Yeah, I have to follow up with this because, you know, people play hurt, they played injured, but what is it like playing with a high ankle sprain when you look at, and you mentioned Patrick Mahomes, how challenging is that, that particular injury? Well, if he was at any other position, he'd, he'd be, he'd be out of luck right now, but mm. because he's at the quarterback and he's going to have enough protection, he's athletic enough that, you know. He's going to compensate for it, but it is going to be painful. Mm. Um, I'm sure he has been treating it from after the last snap last week. Right. He's been rehabbing that bad boy. He's been waking up. He's been doing. He's been doing double days, uh, right. double sessions all week, getting ready and, and trying to nurse that thing. So it should be okay. But still, all it's going to take is one yeah. more, you know, one one hit on it or whatever. But uh, he's a warrior. Yeah. And Warriors find a way to get through it. Now, he is talented enough that he's going to be able to compensate and do the things that he's still capable of doing. How intense, how how do you as a player calm the nerves and emotions down as you're going into this game? Because the Super Bowl is another beast within itself. But right. this game right here, man, sometimes, I ain't going to lie to you, the championship games are better than the Super Bowls. They are, they are. And, you know, it, it, it's one of those games, as we say, you know, you know one mistake and it's over. Mm -hmm. So that pressure uh, to be flawless and the whole week of preparation is determined how some of the outcomes are going to happen and how did you prepare? You know, as we win, look back on what you did. As we lose, look back on how and what we should have done. So, right. um, it, 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 it's it, you know, right now they got the momentum going. So it's really you know uh, business as usual with a little heightened uh, uh, suspense there. But you know the guys are, are the coaches are, are, are pushing them. And, you know, you don't really have time to really think, take it all in because we as outsiders, we're watching, we see this, we acknowledge the fact that, you know, the tension, the, 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 but because they're insulated and it's like, we're working, we're working, we're working and you like, keep them busy so they don't have time to think about it. And, you know, it's like we line up and we play and we do our thing and we're not really thinking about that other side of it of you know the nervousness and 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 and, and the stress level and it's like nah they're, they're just out there playing wow so when you watch the games do you kind of sometimes feel the butterflies after 11 seasons being in there you know do you do you you have your your, your ritual or you kind of just <laughs> chill out relax because you I know just, we 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 spend time on the road together so we know <laughs> our, our drink our food you know <laughs> absolutely absolutely well you know it, it's funny you know in my house you know my, my wife loved watching games she puts the game on quicker than i do <laughs> yeah and you know it's like she wants to watch the game and i may decide i don't feel like watching the game i'm gonna go do something else but then i'll come back later and catch it you know third fourth quarter uh -huh. but uh you know i still I, you know this time of year it's important to, you know, yeah you want to go see now you want to i want to see all four quarters what happened and you know i'm, a, I'm always jotting something down i'm i'm <laughs> jotting down you know a mistake that was made a penalty or a turnover something or somebody did something stupid out there on the football field and I'm like, I'm I'm sitting up there in the house. I'm like, that guy right there, that's that's an a-hole. He he's he's gonna cost his team. And you know, I'm sitting up, my wife's like, you ain't that kid ain't got nothing to do with no connection with you. I said, but he gonna cost his team. There's guys like that, you know. And then you see the big plays, you know, the scoop and score, the, right. uh, the, the pick six. 
And you're like, yeah, that's that. That's the deciding factor. Right. That's going to come back three quarters and bite them in the butt because they let that happen. You know, so I'm sitting up, yeah, I'm, I'm watching it and I'm, I'm taking notes of, of, of things. And, it, it, you know, you, you watch it. I've been blessed to be around here in, in my organization for the last 40 years. So I've seen I've seen greatness. I've seen some great football. I mean, we have, you know, uh, to be part of it and to be associated with it. it yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. That's great. That's great. Well, we appreciate your time. Once again, happy new year to you. We can't wait to see you here. You're coming to Canton this year, right? You coming, you coming to Canton? All right. Absolutely. All right. Well, we can't wait to see you here. And thank you so much for your time, Andre. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, man. Good to see you. And I hope to see you soon. Andre Tippett right here on The Mission.